Gadget UK here again. As you can see this time we're looking at uh, Pro Power Pal again, which is the uh, 5 volts 3 amp power supply for the Neo Geo AES. So I think the security screws in here from memory, because I did look at one of these previously on my channel here, um, and the caps had leaked, so I'm guessing it's going to be a similar thing, possibly on this. Maybe the switching transistor's gone. Uh, yeah, Yoshi's just made an <laughs> appearance on the camera there. This is our little kitten, Yoshi. Um, we got a couple of kittens actually when Mario died in July. Um, anyway, I'll get the screws out of here. I'll show you the, the bits in a minute so you can uh, yeah, see what bits required to remove these. Yeah, so it's the same uh, screw type here, security bit. Uh, game bit, I think it is, as uh, N64, SNES, PC Engine. Uh, you can see ahead of that there. But yeah, this fits perfectly. Mega Drive cars as well. So before we go inside this, same warnings I've given in previous videos. Um, the capacitors on here will hold. Yeah, you, go, you can see a blasted track there, just like in that other AES power supply. So it's going to be leaked uh, electrolyte, and you can see some of it there actually um, on the copper traces, and it feels a bit sticky, the board. Um, so I mean, it, it may have done some more damage, that's the other thing, you know, you get. Uh, an arc like that, that's happened there, that blows one of the traces, it could have taken something out like the switching transistor there um, looks slightly different revision, maybe not uh, but yeah the caps you can see that caps a bit domed there, that's going to have leaked so and I think that's what all I did last time, I swapped out these two here that little one down there uh, and this one and then just fixed the uh, burnt out trace here but I'm pretty sure that's what it's going to be so I'll remove those caps we'll clean up this area here um, and just measure take a few measurements and things uh, I'll measure the uh, switching transistor here make sure you've not got shorts um, and just have a visual inspection of some of the other things to make sure nothing else has blown as a result of that the fuse will have gone probably I got my meter on continuity nothing just test make sure yeah meters on the right setting nothing so that fuse is blown we'll just short that main cap there just in case there's any charge I don't think there is no nothing so before I take anything off we'll get a, a cotton bud here with some uh, IPA uh, and just clean up where that blast has happened around there we're gonna have a gap in the trace there it's actually burnt into the PCB a little bit there but we can repair that with a little bit of wire you know just roots a piece of wire from wherever that trace has gone uh, across to here somewhere uh, but before we do that like I say and before we power it up we do need to remove those electrolytics um, and just have a, a general clean of the board to get any electrolyte um, off so we'll just uh, have a bit of a scratch around here because what's actually happened is you can see the corrosion's eaten away at this trace here so some of this is going to be salvageable up to about this point over here I think and then it's, it's probably disintegrated um, up this side, you can see it's a very dark colour there, dark like a dark brown. Over this side, it'll be more coppery. So, there might not actually be a hole in the trace there. That looks like one continuous trace to me. It doesn't look like it's completely blown, but uh, you know, there is a burn mark in the middle here, so it's obviously arced across there, I think. So, it's subtly different to the damage on mine. I think mine arced here or something. I can't quite remember actually. I need to look back about the video. Um, I can get the wire brush onto there as well and try and clean that up a bit uh, and I could always just get some flux on there and some solder, use some solder braid and just re you know, tin that there. Might actually be able to salvage that if I can scratch enough of the surface to make it, um, uh, you know, the solder bite. Um, so I might just give that a go now actually before I do anything to see if we can recover that trace there. So I think I'll just uh, give this a bit of a, a thorough clean actually, just get some IPA on there uh, and just give it a good brush because there's quite a lot of electrolyte leaked uh, around that whole area there and this is just a quick way of being able to clean that whole area up in one go. Uh, we'll just pour some of this over uh, and brush it down like that. Yeah, so that's made a big difference actually. You can see we've got the copper exposed here now. So I'm going to get some flux on there um, and some solder and just run some solder, drag some solder braid with solder over that. 
so while the iron's heating up there, um, I just thought I'd show you something else. Can you see corrosion's got under those three connections there and under those two? And you can just about see, uh, I can't see it very well actually because of the distance I'm away from this, a little ripple there as that, you know, the, the trace is lifted and rippled. So what I'm going to need to do is join these three with a piece of wire and again it's lifted here so then scratch off uh, a load of this here so you know join all this up here um, I might just do that with one continuous piece of solder actually you know just scratch these off scratch that there scratch that there and then put some solder over those three points and a similar thing here scratch the bit in between and scratch a little bit off here and just uh, you know flood that area with solder um, just so that those are not it's not going to come off because can you see that can you see under there you can see under the copper um, Strictly speaking, what I could do maybe is desolder the three connections there, just lift this, clean underneath, put some uh, epoxy or some super glue or something under there. But you know, I'm not keen on using chemicals and things like that to fix something like that. It's better just to have uh, a physical solder, uh, you know, a bridge, a wire, or something. I think leading up to this area here, um, and the same thing here. That that should be all right. I mean, there's a little bit of corrosion uh, in a few of the places there, but it's pretty cosmetic, really. It's mainly uh, those bits and obviously this trace. Um, I'll inspect this one as well. I think that one's all right. It's weird how you've got the burn in the middle of the thing there, but I think that's because the connectivity has been between these two traces uh, in that area there by the looks of things. Uh, I think the main cap's all right there. Um, it was on the last one. I swapped it anyway. Um, I've got a spare for that, but I think that's okay. I'll take it off and test on the map cap meter, uh, and I'll take those two off in a minute, and we'll, we'll check those two. I'm damn sure that's, that's what it is. It's going to be those two primarily. Um, and that one was all right on the last one, but I did swap it. So I'll probably swap it this time as well. And obviously, we need a new fuse. I did just check the transistor there. Uh, you can see it's marked uh, base collector emitter. Just put your meter on continuity and just uh, test between base and collector, collector emitter, base and emitter. Well, all, all the different combinations there. Uh, and you're looking for a short, really. Um, I didn't get any short, so it should be okay to test. I didn't test it thoroughly in terms of working out whether the transistor's all right, but there's no short, so it shouldn't pop the fuse. I do think it's just going to be this and the caps. So I'll just get some flux on there. Uh, again, I use this stuff all the time, this chip quick flux. It's fantastic flux, it really is. It's just a bit pricey. Um, you're better off, I think you can get like five or six tubes of this for about 18 quid or something. That's probably the best value, the best way to buy it, really. Uh, now the iron's heated up, just clean the tip. Uh, I'm not sure how easy this is going to be to get solder to flow on here. Um, I will use the, like I said, the desolder braid to tidy it up a bit. We'll just see initially if we can, oh there we go, is it's joining all right. Just get some solder on there. Turn that trace, actually that's not too bad actually. You can see we've got a nice straight piece there. Solder that pin. Yeah, that's not bad at all, that actually. Um, I'm quite amazed at how well that's flowed. So I'll just clean that up with a bit of uh, IPA. Um, we'll do the same thing up here to repair those bits. So again, just using the pointer tool to here to scratch the um, mask off the top there so we can see the exposed copper right up to the edge of the uh, connections there. Uh, and we should be able to do the same thing. So something to consider when you're doing something like this is bear in mind the thickness of these tracers could well be sized in certain places to be a specific thickness for a safety reason. You may want a trace like that to pop. Um, so you know you do risk, you know you do take a small risk doing uh, modifications like this. Um, you need to give it some thoughts. I mean, to be honest, if your thickness of this trace here, we're not. It's not going to be a problem. Those three are all supposed to be joined up. Um, this here could mean that if there's a fault, I mean we had that before actually when I did it last time, when I didn't swap the caps out and we still had some electrolyte on the board, we had the arc moved somewhere else because this bit here was thicker because I reinforced it with a wire or something in that previous video, it blew somewhere else um, and that might happen and that may cause further damage but as long as we check everything first, you know, make sure there's no, like I say, no shorts anywhere, um, we swap the caps out, clean the board up, remove all the electrolyte. It should be okay, uh, unless you know something else has been damaged as a result of that. Um, and the only way you're going to know is really from measuring round things and stuff. And, but it should be all right, I think. So I got some solder on the points of that cap there. 
Uh, and I'm just going to heat and just uh, try and pull it off gradually. On either side, just wiggling it one way and then the other. Could use the dissolved pump, that would be easier. I mean, it's coming off super easy, this, I can feel it. Pretty much falling off there now. There we go, it's out. Uh, and look at that, you see that's wet. Soaking wet on the underside of there. So apologies the light's not very good, you can see uh, the liquid in there, the electrolyte. So we'll need to clean up that area there quite thoroughly as well. Um, it can be quite hard to clean this, th this top side of the board because some of that could have gone under that transformer. What I might do is just pour a cap of it and then just like tilt it sideways. Do, do that a few times, you know, rinse, repeat. Just to try and clean that whole top area of the board there. Um, but as you can see, yeah, most of that's it's coming off there. And I've scratched around the area there again, just next to the solder contacts, you know, the pads, um, just to extend because there's a bit of corrosion on those pads there. It's one side done. Um, there's a lot more corroded down here. You can see where that, all that copper's exposed. So yeah, as let's say I've deliberately um, scratched off around there, just to make sure we've got a good join to the trace from the pad because the pad is pretty eaten away. So we'll do the same thing with uh, this cap here now, just uh, heat and wiggle until it comes off. And again, yeah, it smells of electrolyte. It doesn't look wet under there, but it smells of electrolyte, so we'll swap that out anyway. It's only a 1000 uh, microfarad 16 volt, that one. So I haven't needed to scratch the uh, traces here, the pads are okay on this one. I suspect that cap might be alright actually, I think the electrolyte that was on it was from the nearby cap, but there's no point in not swapping it out, it's only a cheap 1000 microfarad 16 volt cap, I've got tons of them spare so we'll swap it out while we're there. Uh, I think at that point once we've cleaned up I might just test it and see see whether it works or not. So final uh, scrub with a brush here now, some IPA, I've just cleaned with cotton buds and stuff to get most of the flux off there but, sorry knocking the camera, um, it's always a good idea just to give it you know, an extra clean, just to make sure it's super 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 clean especially when there's been electrolyte leaked everywhere like there was. So the final thing I've just done here is just that bit that was burnt on the board there is just scratch off any of the carbonised surface. And I've just got the meter on resistance and I'm just testing just to make sure we've not got, um, as you can see there isn't, it's not carbonised, you know, there's not conductivity and we'll just uh, test connectivity here between these traces just to make sure we've not got a short, I think that's supposed to be a short there, we've got a coil going across that, those two connections there by the looks of things yeah 0.7 ohms so I think that's normal from thinking back to when I did the last one of these that trace there's okay yeah I think it'll be okay I think we'll, we'll just give it a try I think I'll reassemble it now um, all I've done at this stage is swap those two caps out repair the damage clean up the electrolyte um, check the transistor obviously and swap out this fuse let's do that actually because I'll forget um, so yeah just pop the fuse out here. So you won't be able to see it but it says T1A 250 volts, so that's quick blow, uh, 1 amp 250 volts, I should have a load of those. So I've got the new fuse in there, we'll put the lid back on um, and just test it. Uh, it's like last time, I need to clean up in there, can you see the blast, you know, blew the bits of, the bits of copper exploded off that trace, uh, went all over there. So I've just cleaned up that with a bit of uh, IPA, you can see the muck that's come off there, the electrolyte and the bits of copper, but you can't get all of it off with IPA, some of it's actually welded onto the uh, plastic, so I am going to get the wire brush there, uh, and you might not think that's important, but let's say the underneath of the board is very close to that area, so you don't want anything connect conductive uh, hanging around there, really, if I'm honest, the nearer to plastic that is, the better. So it's the moment of truth, is it going to bang? Yeah, no bang. That's a good sign. Um, let's just get the meter, put it on voltage DC. Uh, you can just about see that, I think. Um, we'll try. It's not plugged in just at the moment, but there might still be a bit of charge in here. Let's just see what let's see what they're showing at the moment. Yeah, nothing. Okay, so let's connect power again. It's pretty silent, that power supply. So there might be something else wrong with it. Yeah, it's completely dead. Now it could be the fuse from the mains lead's gone, so we'll check that too. 
yeah, so that didn't go according to plan. Uh, it was totally silent, I never heard anything, but you can see the fuse has gone. Hell. Scared the out of me, that. Did it scare you? Well, this is strange. Uh, between collector and emitter, we've now got short. We didn't have a short before, I'm sure. Maybe I just didn't have the contacts on there right when I was measuring it. Um, but it appears the reason the fuse is blowing is the switching transistor. Uh, and I, I thought that, I, I suspected that, I'll tell you why. Second time we just tested it now and I swapped out the cap there for a new cap. Um, straight away, nothing, you know, no DC voltage, took the lid off, took the board out, I thought I measured the voltage across there and it was zero, completely zero. That's not what I would expect, I would expect something to be in there if the transistor had a chance to start switching. Um, so the fact that there was no voltage there whatsoever, and I've measured around, I've checked all the coils on here, we've got like a pair I'll show you, hang on, put it back onto continuity again. We've got a, a coil there, a coil there, one over here. So, the transformer's okay. Um, I couldn't find any of the shorts anywhere else. I've gone through and I've tested the caps and things. Can you see that? We've got a resistor there, that's about point seven or something, I don't know what size that is on the board, but it looks okay. But I've gone through and just checked all the caps and things here, checked the bridge, you can see we've got the negative, then an AC. Nothing there, nothing there. Uh, negative to positive is pretty much a short. That's a strange, actually. Um, but there's more of a short there. So it looks like the switching transistor's gone. So I'm going to take that off now, see if I can find it. I might have an equivalent for that. I might have to order one, I don't know. But uh, in order to do that, it looks like we need to unscrew these two screws here to release this clamp. Um, and then we should be able to just desolder it and pull it off. Well, it's not this transistor, I'll show you. Just measure between the pins here. Getting okay, no shorts at all. Uh, and if we measure it back on the board again, sorry, I know the light's uh, fading in here, it's uh, going dark. Um, collector and emitter again. Short, absolute dead short. And if I measure between negative and positive on the bridge, 0.7. So it's mysterious how there's a dead short here, the zero ohms, which suggests it's something nearer to here. Maybe there's two shorts, I don't know. Um, and then a short here, which is 0 .0 0.007 on my meter. Let me just put on resistance mode, let's just measure the resistance there. 11 ohms. So, what's across there? Uh, we've got the cap. The positive goes over there, the cap. Well, I'm damn sure the cap's not short. 0.6 ohms. Have we got some 0.6 ohms there? Yeah, that's measuring as a short. Yeah, something else has gone wrong with this, because now we've got now we've got a short between this pin here and there. We didn't have that there before. So something has something else has gone wrong. I wonder if it's the bridge. Well, let me take the bridge off. So I'm just trying to make sense of this. I removed the bridge. We've still got a short from negative to positive there. Removed the cap. We've still got a short across here, uh, which is you know these two connections here. And I don't. You can see we've got a three pin device here, um, and there's some markings on the board there. G is that gate. S T uh, and I T. I think that says. Um, so I'm going to remove that next because you know it's these two traces here that are now shorted which could suggest that I've checked these zeners here they seem all right there could be a small component around there that's causing that but I suspect that unless the transformers failed yeah so I've removed that now and apologies it's getting even darker in here if it gets any much darker I won't be able to see what on earth I'm doing if I now do a, sh a connectivity test between those two pins our short's gone between uh, collector and emitter short's gone uh, between negative and positive, short has gone. So I can put the bridge back on, put the transistor, the cap back on. We're dealing with uh, this component here. Uh, I don't know what that is. Sorry, the lighting's awful in here. Um, you can just about see the partner on that. I'm guessing it could be something like an SCR. I'm not sure with the, the, the uh, pin markings on the board there. I'm not sure what those designate, but we'll just yeah measure that as a short between all three pins. That's failed, whatever that is. 
So we've got our replacement TM861S there. So I'm going to fit that and give that a go. Uh, and we'll just uh, test it in comparison to the one we took off. The one we took off we had uh, shorts on all three pins I think. So I'll just measure it in comparison to the one we took off. If I just measure it, I've got shorts between all three pins in any direction there on the old one. Uh, yeah, nothing there. Low resistance there, like 0.42, and the same the other way around, 0.42 on the meter. But between the centre pin uh, and those side pins, there nothing. So uh, we'll fit that and just see if that fixes it. So I'm just soldering the component on here. Hopefully it's going to work this time, and we don't uh, see the fuse pop again. I mean, the, the short was removed after we removed that component from the board. So. Uh, and it's no surprise it's on that the rail that had popped previously. So I mean it could be, uh, like I said, the electrolyte that's got around there and caused uh, excess current, you know, it's blown that component, blown the trace at the same time. It could be that it destroyed that component which, you know, shorted and that's what's caused the trace to pop. Um, strange on mine, that component seemed to be okay, but the trace popped the same way. So whether mine, my, you know, my other uh, AES uh, Pro Power Pal, or whatever it's called, Power Supply, fails the same way at some point, uh, remains to be seen. Well, would you believe it, the final component, and I mean absolute final, this was the last ditched attempt. I, I'd run out of ideas with this, and the last thing I could think was to remove the, the three transistors here, two down there and the one down here, and just test them out of circuit. They measured perfectly in circuit. I was convinced there was no issues with those three. Um, particularly this one, it did measure identically in circuit. Uh, now, this is the uh, other power supply, so I've borrowed the one off there, stuck it on this one to prove it. This is the old faulty part, uh, and I'll show you, this is what, the reason I took it off my, uh, my working one there is, if I just connect this up, uh, um, there we go, so it's connected up, press the test button, and hopefully you can see that, I'm zoom in a little bit. Bear in mind it's a transistor, it's taken a long time, so that's a clue, must be an issue. And watch what it reports, two diodes, yeah, absolutely guaranteed, that is the fault. Uh, and let's say at that point I thought, yeah, we've got a fault, I measured it in my multimeter and I could see, you know, there's, it does measure two diodes. It's not correct. And if I put the other one in here, it measures a, a transistor. I think it was NPN, I can't quite remember. Might be PNP. Um, so there we go. And as soon as I swapped that out, I tested it, it works fine. So you're probably not going to be able to see that. It's an NEC 2SC1093, I think. So I've ordered one of those for a pound or two. Um, hard to believe that that transistor has caused me all this stress, actually. Um, and as I say, in circuit, it measured fine. So this is my old power supply here, the first one, uh, and as you can see, you know, I borrowed the transistor. So I am waiting for the transistor to come to fix my old one, but I did take the one off this in order to prove the, you know, case with the, you know, the one that I've been looking at through this video. Um, so as you can see, you know, things have changed, you know, I removed all the glue. There's no point having the hot glue there, it's just not needed. It was a bit silly, me leaving it there on that old, that previous video there. It was a bad habit that I picked up uh, from engineers back in the day, you know, to, to deal, deal with things like this. And the reality is, you won't get, unless it is a design fault, and you, you know, you get these things coming in all the time where certain things are arcing certain places, and it's not actually anything other than just maybe a bit of a design fault, you know, when some of the caps um, age a little bit, you know, you can understand doing that kind of mod, but these don't need that mod, they seriously don't, so I would remove uh, glue, you know, if you followed my advice in that first bit, ignore that, you know, still, it's still a useful technique, it can help. But in this case here, I've removed it and I've cleaned up, as you can see, you know, the corrosion, I totally missed it and overlooked it in that previous repair video there. So, and you know, both of these power supplies are looking pretty much the same now. They've all been, you know, cleaned up super clean with the solder and stuff here and the flux has all been cleaned up. Um, so on the, uh, you know, the other board, the one we've been looking at, um, you know, I checked pretty much everything. You know, you've got your bridge, uh, your bridge rectifier down here. You know, so if you draw your bridge out on a diagram on a piece of paper, you can work out you know where the diode should be between the different connections there. Super easy to check a bridge. Um, 
transformer you know you're just gonna have a short across each of these windings if you had a short between them you know you've got faults um, the other thing the other technique and I've not really shown it but having t an identical power supply you can take readings which is exactly what I did you know so go go a, 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 across the various components on here and read them in circuit you know so check these diodes in both directions in diode mode in resistance mode your resistors, even the caps. Put your, your cap on uh, your, your multimeter on resistance mode. Measure over a cap. See what resistance you're getting at those points. Compare them to the other board. Because if you get a difference, that can suddenly start to go. Oh, hang on a minute, I've got a difference here. And you can then start to follow the connections to see what other components are connected to those connections you just measured where you had a difference. And it can narrow down and follow. You know, lead you to where the faulty component is. But I kid you not, everything on the working board measured exactly the same as on the faulty board including you know these little uh, transistors and things here in the SC, you know the um, triac um, uh, and th this transistor importantly this transistor here but you meet on diode test yeah you know, the, the, the everything was the same in both directions between the both both uh, power supplies at uh, resistance mode almost the same like out with uh, I think one reading was about 30 ohms difference so you know it's like 30 uh, 10 30 instead of 1k or so there was hardly any difference at all uh, and that just let's say left me in the dark i got to the point where i'd gone through you know checked all the resistors no no and in visual inspection you know checked everything couldn't see any problems we've replaced the caps i uh, replaced this one for good measure didn't actually need to be done i think the one that was on there is a nichicon or something uh, uh something like that it was a good good brand um, and i kept the old one i'm sure it's all right my sr meter says it's fine and i'm sure it is i kept the one off the original power supply as well because that was fine it's these two here these are the two ones that really cause your problem and i did swap out this one down here got a, a nice new panasonic on the other uh, power supply now as well um i went through th three three of these uh, two, two, you know, the first one blew when I swapped it out, when I, you know, I assumed that it would just failed from age. So that was, you know, one of my replacements had failed. And then I stuck another one on after I recapped the whole thing and checked everything, double checked everything. I couldn't see anything at all, couldn't understand it. So I thought, well, let's just give it a try. It blew another one. So, you know, I, I had a pack of five. So out of that five, two of them went in the bin. And the third one is the one that ended up, you know, still on there. So I've still got a couple of spares. But this is the other thing with power supplies. They can be, you know, costly. Sometimes they can be costly. If you can't find the fault and you think it's okay and you're ready to test, you know, fuses. I must have gone for about six fuses. Um, so, yeah, uh, they're not always cost, uh, you know, cost uh, effective. To repair but it, you know it's a learning exercise i learned something from this <laughs> yeah that sometimes it really is just a case of you know if you've got like the, in this case here you've got one two three four five five lots of, approximately of semiconductors just take them off and measure them out the out the circuit if i'd done that right at the start with those five i'd have found it pretty quickly actually um and it's just ironic that this ended up being the last component that I had to prove one way or another by taking it off and I did take the transformer off that's another thing even though you know you can measure on on, on continuity you know, on, on resistance between the connections and the shorts you know you got like a short between there and there between there and there and stuff so you get shorts all over the place there but I was comparing from this you know this power supply to the other power supply identical but I thought okay well, let's just take it off so I moved the transformer measured them again out of circuit exactly the same I swapped them around just to prove it marked one just to show which way round they were that didn't make any difference still believe the fuse still that was when it the point where it blew the uh, thing down here again that second one i think when i'd done the i'd done the caps as well at that point um but you know i was getting desperate i was like there must be you know maybe that transformer's arcing when it's under current because that's the other thing sometimes things can measure okay and it's only when you get a little bit of current through there suddenly you get a problem so i had to do that i had to rule that transformer out um, but at the same time, like I say, I had swapped those caps as well. I think that was, like I say, when that second, the second replacement blew. I, I, I swapped, that was why I tested it. I thought it's got to be that transformer. It can't be anything else. And after that, I was like, oh, oh my God, what's wrong with this? It's like, it makes no sense. It just defies all logic. Um, and that was, like I say, when I then, then took off the, t the, three tran the two or three, um, I think it was two transistors, uh, three, sorry, these, these two here, no problems at all. The, my meter went, yep. Yeah, MPN or PMP, etc. No, no worries. Stuck that one on. Resistor. It's like, whoa, it's not a resistor. I think we found it. And then I took the one off this board, measured that, and it shows us a transistor. So there you go. And that was it. So, uh, yeah, that was an absolute nightmare. I'll admit. I must have spent ooh, six hours on that over, you know, a few different 
occasions. I spent, uh, I don't know, an hour and a half over Christmas looking at this, and then I got a bit demoralised with everything that was going on in my life over Christmas, so I just never came back to it. And then uh, this last week, I've spent about four hours on it easily. So I'll just clean up the uh, case now with a bit of IPA. Uh, it's just had like sticky labels and things like that in the past. You can see, look, that's coming off that easy uh, with a bit of IPA. Yeah, hopefully that'll come off. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's just had a sticker or something on there at some point. You can see it's melting, it's like disintegrating the IPAs, breaking that down. So I connect it up to the mains, let's just see what this is outputting now. Hopefully, yeah, I think it's neg sensor negative actually. Should be about 5.5 .5 volts roughly. There we go, 5.54. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is uh, calculate a resistor size and stick a resistor connected up to this. Uh, to draw about an amp uh, and just leave it um, on test for an hour or two. Uh, if you're going to do something like that yourself, you know, put it uh, maybe do it on a concrete floor or something in the garage or something, you know, where it's not going to set fire to anything. Uh, and just check the size of the fuse, that's the key, really. I guess if you check the size of the fuse, that's all right, as long as it's got like a 3 amp fuse, you're not in danger of starting any fires and things with something like this. It um, should be all right. So I've got the power supply all cleaned up and uh, reassembled there. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, load test on this. Uh, I'll show you the formulas if, you, if you've never covered any of this stuff before. Uh, you've got two triangles that are worth remembering here. Uh, v, I, R, uh, another triangle, P, I, V. So you can work out the third component uh, in either of these, so you've got voltage, current, resistance, power, current, voltage. And if you remember these, you know, VAR, PIV, these two triangles, like that, separate into the three sections there, you can work out, the, 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 the let's say, the third component of any, you know, as long as you know the values of any of the two. Uh, and obviously you can use, you know, use one of the tables to give you the value to convert the thing and the other kind of thing, you know, if you're missing one. Because um, you've got four unique things here, you know, you've got uh, voltage, current, um, resistance and power um, so in this case I want to what I want to try and do I was going to try and pull an amp now that's dead straightforward you know if you take um, uh, and the formulas I guess that's the other thing I'm missing here uh, so how you derive the formulas from this is that means divide yeah and this line means multiply so if you want to work out voltage voltage equals current times resistance and if you want to work out um, current I, current is voltage divided by resistance. Yeah, divide by resistance. Uh, and resistance is voltage divided by current. Uh, you know, and it's the same here, you know, power is current times uh, voltage, uh, current is power divided by voltage, and voltage is power divided by current. Voltage. Yep, yeah, that's the multiply, that's the divide. Uh, and current equals uh, power divided by voltage. And voltage equals power divided by current. So it's dead straightforward. So we know the voltage of this is five volts. Um, and what I wanted to do is just work out the current um, and the power. So if we put, you know, if, if you take say a 4K, 4R7 for nearly five ohms, let's just round it up, pretend it's five ohms, it's dead easy maths then, because you've got five volts divided by um, five ohms gives you one. So your current would be one amp. So that would draw one amp, one of these um, 4R7 uh, resistors. Well, just a bit more than 4 amp because it's 4R7, it's a bit less than 5 ohms. But I think it's been a while since I looked at these and I don't see any markings on them to identify. Post in the comments below if you know how. Um, I've obviously got the uh, tolerance there. There is a Y. Does that indicate the um, wattage or that 212 R3? I've no idea. Is that 3 watt? I hope it's not 3 watt. Um, I'm guessing these are 5 watt just from looking on eBay at the size of them. Um, so we'll put, we'll leave these two joined together. They're both the same size here. Uh, and we're doubling up, you know, so it's going to be sh just shy of 10 ohms. Uh, not 10 ohms. Uh, yeah, 10 ohms. Um, so if you do the, the maths again, you know, your voltage is 5, um, your resistance is 10, it's going to give us roughly half an amp. So yeah, I can live with that. We'll we'll draw half an amp because the, coming back to the, the whole wattage thing again, the reason I need to double these up is if these are only five 
watt resistors we're going to be drawing um, and this is the thing okay let's look at the wattage the power so we need to set the current multiply it by the voltage well the voltage is five volts we were with one of these we're drawing an, an amp that would be you know it's one times five five watts so if these are five watts it's up to its capacity this would probably probably burn out in a short period of time I would think yeah so the power uh, 0 0.5 times 5 um, is um, 2.5 watts so you know we've halved it and it's pretty obvious but I thought I'd point it out anyway you know voltage in volts current in amps resistance in ohms uh, and power watts so uh, yeah if we use these two with the 5 volts there we're going to get just a bit more than half an amp maybe I think um, I worked it on the calculator a minute ago it's like 0.54 ish uh, amps so uh, I'll get some crop clips um, and we'll connect this up um, I'm just going to sort of wedge the thing in the centre there and then just join up the other side with a crop clip uh, and we should be able to test that and I'll perhaps you know connect the meter in series we'll measure the current measure the voltage and I'll just leave it powered up for a period of time just to you know to, to just to you know burn it in kind of thing just make sure it doesn't explode so typically with multimeters if you want to measure current you've got to use uh, you know the specific inputs here because um, they're just wired a different way. I mean, there may be modern multimeters that you don't need to swap the things over. I honestly, no idea. I think you do. I think because of the way it monitors the currents, is uh, you've got to put it through a different connection. Um, so uh, what we need that this one here, yeah, ten amp, yeah, three hundred milliamps uh, uh, is fused. Uh, so we'd probably blow it if we run, uh, you know, blow the fuse if we run current through there, um, and then switch the meter onto uh, amps DC down here. Uh, and then in terms of wiring it up your probes have got to go in series with the you know the, the, the current flow so you know just say from in between the positive so if we look at the resistors here we've connected one side of the resistor there we'll stick it to the positive uh, of the meter uh, this side is going to be the return uh, to the power supply so we'll just clip that on there, good grief, that crop clip's pretty tough. Don't want to open, there we go, it's going to make a pretty good fit. Uh, and then the other side is going to go in there, like that. Yeah, that crop clip's not going to stay on, is it? So the current now, like I say, is full, you've got, you know, the multimeter is in series with the, the, the whole, you know, chain there from, you know, the positive side to the negative side. So we should be able to measure the currents flowing through that. So I'll connect the uh, power up now, hang on, just wait. And there you go, as calculated, 0.54. So we're drawing approximately uh, half an amp through there. Uh, and yeah, this shouldn't be too hot to touch because there's going to be a couple of watts, two and a half watts drawn through there. Um, and it's split between them. You know, that's the other thing. You know, we didn't just half the power there by doubling up those resistors, but we've got twice as many resistors, so uh, each one's going to be uh, only uh, like 0.125 uh, watts, roughly. And you know they are they're just loop, they're not even lukewarm really. Um, but as you can see, we've got a stable, well, fairly stable. It's moved up down a little bit. Yeah, 0.52, 0.53. It could be the crop clips not making a good connection, but we'll just leave that on for, like, say, a half an hour, an hour. Um, I might just try with one uh, afterwards just to see what happens. I mean, we might burn the resistor up, it might get very hot. But we should, in theory, just for a very short period of time, be able to do that. I mean, they are way around, so they'll absorb a lot of heat for a period of time. So we should be able to just have one on its own. Uh, and I can show you, you know, you'll see that the current will have jumped up to just over an amp. If the resistors were exactly 5 ohms, the maths obviously is a lot simpler. We wouldn't have that 3 or 4 on the end there um, and similarly when we go up to you know just use a single uh, 4R7 if, if that was a 5 ohm resistor single 5 ohm resistor it would then jump up to an amp and it'd be spot on pretty much an amp whereas we, we're going to see it's going to be a little bit over an amp because we've got uh, you know we'll only have a 4R7 in there when we when we do that test so when I was showing you how to connect the probes up there uh, you've got your plus and your minus coming out your uh, power supply connections here what you want to do is uh, your probe for your multimeter that's one of them wants to go there and you want the current to run through the probe let's say this is the meter for m for meter um, and then you've got your negative lead coming out of there you want it to go out of that back around here so you're putting your, your multimeter 
you know, in line with a connection, you know, somewhere along here, you know, it's going to, the current needs to flow through your meter like that. It's not like, you know, you stick one probe there, one probe there, like you do when you're measuring a voltage, you'll short out because the way, you know, it, it works, you'd be, you, if you did that, you'd be shorting here. And it would likely, you know, if you've got a fuse in your meter, it'll blow the fuse. If you haven't got a fuse in your meter, you'll damage your meter probably, or damage the equipment you're connected to, or blow the fuse in the equipment you connected to, probably. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I say always worth remembering. If you've never done it before, because I know I have had people contact me in the past saying, how on earth do you measure current? You know, it's not the sort of thing you really do very much, I guess. Um, but yeah, so it's got to be in series, like say, with one of the connections. Don't uh, you know? Don't connect across the supply like you do when you're measuring voltages. Yeah, so we've been on for about half an hour here now, uh, and you can see it's pretty stable. It really is. That's good. You know, I like the fact that's not uh, deviated much. Um, and the interesting thing here is, you know, these were stone cold pretty much. Now they're not. They're actually quite warm. Uh, if we use the uh, IR thing here, try and get on there. See that? You can see. So that's 66 degrees. So yeah, you know, those are burning off uh, that current, uh, you know, converting into heat. Um, so I do suspect if we connected one of these up on its own, it probably wouldn't last a lot very long. Those are really hot actually, yeah. So yeah, let's uh, disconnect that now, we're all done. Um, uh, the other thing worth doing, I guess, is whilst that's connected in series, we'll try that now, measure the voltage, just to make sure you've got five volts. But I mean, it stands to reason if the, you know, we're seeing that amount of current there, we know it's five five volts, we wouldn't see the, the same current level if the voltage had changed, you know, there's, there's a relationship between the two. Back into voltage, because otherwise we'll short out the supply, put it on voltage, uh, volts DC, and if we just back over here again, uh, if we try and measure across here, we don't want to short anything. Yeah, now bear in mind I've got the probes around the wrong way, but you can see there, 5.48 so you know it's uh, holding up pretty well uh, and it is about five and a half volts this power supply without any load uh, when you draw a bit more i mean the neo geo pulls about i don't know 1.3 amps ish it drops down to about 5.3 ish you know and it holds pretty steady there maybe a bit more 5.35 or something um but yeah that's uh, you know pretty good evidence that that's working fine I mean we could do further things, we could connect the scope up and have a look for uh, AC ripple and stuff on there but it's been fully recapped you know as I talked about earlier I've checked everything on this you know every single component more or less has had a check it's ironic that I ended up with that little transistor it was literally the last thing there was nothing else on that board that could have been at fault um, and as I showed you know as I talked about earlier it measured okay in the circuit so this is why sometimes things like this can be really difficult to work on um, what I, it would be ideal really if I had schematics for it maybe I could have worked out a way to isolate uh, things so that it wouldn't have kept blowing that little um, triac or whatever it was there um, so that's one of the way, reasons sometimes power supplies can be difficult to work on because unless you have a full understanding of the, the, the actual design of that power supply and how to modify it to cut certain components out and things you know certain aspects of that you know the circuit uh, out there you know including that feedback loop because it's the feedback loop ultimately that was destroying I think that was destroying the triac you know there was a, an issue there on the uh, regulation side and the feedback in terms of the you know controlling the pulse you know the pulses of the uh, main switching transistor there uh, and I think it was kind of overdriving it and that's why we were having the you know the, the arcing thing you know blowing the traces and then when we solved that you know still shooting up and um, destroying that triac I'm not really sure how the triac died actually because it's rated 8 amp that device um, no idea you know post in the comments below if you know more um, it's, I'd be interested to see some schematics one day for that power supply um, that, but that might help make sense of it I could guess you could spend ages trying to reverse this stuff I mean it's, there's not that many components on that board you could do it in a number of hours but I just can't be bothered with the thing uh, the main thing is we learned, I've learned a few things hopefully you've learned a few things and um, yeah, it's really good being able to salvage one of these genuine uh, power supplies here. I mean, I do realise, you know, you can buy something off the shelf, 5, five volts, 3 amp. Well, the 3 amps is the tricky bit. You can get loads of cheap, you know, 2 amp ones, but they're, they're good power supplies, these. They really are. You know, the fact that they're still knocking around now, and all that's needed is a recap and, you know, that transistor replacing. And I think if the 
caps had not failed on it, that transistor probably wouldn't have failed. It's a similar, you know, just, this has got almost a similar failure to the previous one I looked at. The only difference is on the other one, the tra that transistor uh, hadn't failed, but the, 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 the rails, you know, blasted off just the same. And I think it was the same thing. I think the electrolyte leaks on the board affected the regulation side and, the, you know, for one reason or another, the, uh, it had ramped up the uh, frequency there on the switching side to boost the output voltage, thinking the output voltage was too low and you know bang you know trace trace blows etc uh, hopefully you found that interesting thanks for watching i'll see you soon